There's a lot of great music in Animal Crossing New Horizons, as I'm sure you're all aware. In fact, statistically, you are all very much aware. The sparse instrumental textures, the melodies that are simple but strong, and the way the occasional super juicy chord is just dropped in out of nowhere, Animal Crossing music has always been great, and New Horizons is no exception. So let me paint a picture of what I want to talk about today, a musical moment that totally blew me away. After a long, hard day of catching hundreds, nay, thousands of sea bass, the sun has set and you race to the Nook's Cranny store to sell your haul just before they close up for the night. But as you enter, you're greeted with something completely unexpected. The regular music's been replaced with soft strings and piano in a completely new, sweet and slow arrangement that catches you totally off guard. As Timmy and Tommy yawn and prepare to close up shop, you just sit and enjoy the music for as long as they'll let you stay in their store. This was my experience discovering the game's shop closing theme, which plays in Nook's Cranny for the last 10 minutes that the shop is open each night. And judging from the comments online, neither my experience discovering the track or my intense affection towards it are the least bit unique. What makes this piece sound so magical? I don't know if I can explain it definitively, but I have to try. So, let's go. Firstly, let's talk about the melody. It's not so obvious at first listen, but the shop closing theme is actually a rearrangement of the regular Nook's Cranny theme's melody. Originally, when Timmy and Tommy set up shop in this little shack, the music was a simple, slow, laid-back funk groove with drums, bass, acoustic guitar, and a synth melody line. The slow tempo and swung 16th note feel are very easy going, and the melody is made up of one simple figure. The notes of this melodic phrase outline a triad, which gives the phrase both a simplicity and a very strong sound. Think of how a children's song sounds very simple, but the melody makes a lot of sense and always gets stuck in your head. To add a bit of color to this triadic sound, the melody uses the triad built off of the third of the underlying chord. This first phrase outlines a C sharp minor triad, which highlights the third, fifth, and major seventh of the underlying A major chord. The following phrase shows the same melodic structure moved down to an A major triad, but this time over an F sharp minor chord, once again giving us the third, fifth, and seventh of the underlying harmony. This triadic figure basically repeats for the entire tune, moving around to outline different triads that relate to the changing chords in different ways. But my favorite part is the way the melody echoes itself by repeating each melodic phrase exactly in the following bar. The original phrase and its echo are panned left and right, musically symbolizing Timmy and Tommy and the way that they repeat everything the other one says. When Nook's Cranny leaves its humble shack origins and upgrades to a nicer building, the music upgrades with it. The tempo is a little quicker and we've moved to a straight eighth feel. It still feels pretty easygoing, like the rest of the game's soundtrack, but it's just a little more upbeat than before. Bass, drums, and electric piano rhythm section are joined by piano and flugelhorn doubling the new incarnation of the melody. The same triadic figure as before is put into a new rhythm over a slightly different chord progression. There's a couple of differences from the original theme that I want you to notice. The way the melody moves back down from the 5th to the 3rd of the C sharp minor triad in the first phrase, and the way it reverses this movement by jumping up from the 3rd to the 5th of an A major triad to end off the second phrase. It's these little structural details that will allow the melody to be recognizable in different settings, even when there's a lot that's changed around it. These triads are harmonized by A major 7 and D major 7 chords respectively, allowing them to outline the colorful major 7ths of each chord and the 9th of this D chord. The basic structure of this melody is retained for the shop closing theme, but there are a lot of dramatic changes that make it sound completely different. First of all, this arrangement is in 3-4 time rather than 4-4 time, and the rhythm of each phrase is altered to fit into the new time signature. 
Instead of ending on an offbeat, the last note of each phrase is pushed to land on beat one of the next bar, and then the phrasing is altered so that this beat one is the start of each four bar phrase. All of the action of the melody takes place as a pickup to each phrase. The bar of space that was left between each melodic phrase in our previous example is stretched out with the last note of the melody being held for three straight bars of our new 3-4 time. This space is where all of the real meat of the piece happens, which leads us to our next point. Let's talk about the harmony. The previous two iterations we heard were mostly made up of your basic chords in a major key. The 1 chord, the 4 chord, the minor 6 chord, and maybe a 2-5-1 to close it off. The shop closing theme, now in the key of C instead of A, is also made up of these basic chords, with the first half of the piece being made up of one big 1-4-2-5 progression, C, F, D minor, G, with four bars given to each chord. The space left in the melody and by the static chord for each of these four bar phrases is filled in with a really cool move that I think is key to what makes this tune sound the way it does, the line cliché. I feel like there should be a better name for it, but I haven't heard one. Anyways, the idea is that when you're sitting on one chord for a while, one note in that chord moves chromatically up or down to create some motion and color without ever moving to a different chord. For example, the root note in the C major chord descends down chromatically to B, then to B flat, changing the static C chord to a C to C major 7 to C7. The C7 sound created from this line cliché also simultaneously functions as a secondary dominant chord, perfectly setting up a move to the following F major. This kind of line cliché shows up more in older pop music, especially as a way to move from the 1 chord to the 4 chord like this, but the shop closing theme takes it a step further by putting a line cliché on every chord in the progression. The F chord we move to takes its 5th, C, and raises it chromatically up to the 6th, D, giving us this spicy F augmented chord in between. The following D minor chord uses a descending root line like our first C chord to give us a D minor, D minor, major 7, D minor 7 before changing to a D7 secondary dominant chord that resolves to our final 4 bar phrase. A G chord with another rising 5th line from G to G augmented to G6 all the way up to a G7 chord that sets up a return to our tonic C major. The rising fifth and descending root are the two main kinds of line cliches that you'll see in the wild, and I think they're both such classy moves. The second time through the melody, the string melody line is replaced with an oboe, and the open rolling piano arpeggios are replaced with chords played way up in the high register. The tune ends off a little differently than the first time around. The D7 to G section gets axed and replaced with a B flat 7 chord that moves to this final C over G, F minor 6, C cadence. The minor 4 to 1 move is so classic and so in line with the mood of the piece that I would have been mad if it hadn't been used in the arrangement, and it's a perfect way to end off the piece. Lastly, let's talk about context. Having this song surprise you the first time you enter the store close to closing, with Timmy and Tommy yawning and getting ready to close up shop adds a whole other dimension to the music that you wouldn't get if you just heard it in isolation. It would still be a great piece of music in isolation, and it would still feel the same way, but in the context of the game I think it has a little more power to it than it otherwise would have. 
As great as Nintendo is at making games with great music, the thing that they're really best at is using the music to enhance the game experience. As great as the music is on its own, the priority is always on making the game as good as possible, and Animal Crossing New Horizons is full of little musical details like this that add up to make the world feel alive. I think the shop closing theme is a great example of that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page here, or follow me on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who bought a notebook over at Musician's Notebook. We've had to restock a couple times already, which just feels amazing, and I hope you're all enjoying them. Thanks again for watching, and to everyone out there, good night, sleep tight, and don't let the scorpions bite.